Christmas or you kind of work your way through it, right? Because who wants to buy something for somebody and then take it back? Right, not good, not good. Or it could be that there's an empty chair around the table that had somebody in it last year, but not this year. And because that person's no longer here, we have to walk through a period of sadness in our lives or a recognition of some sadness in our lives because of that parting. It could be that our finances are not the same this year as they were last year. It could be that someone lost a job in the family this year that had everything last year. It could be that our midterm scores or our end of the year grades are just not that great. I remember one year bringing my report card home and thinking I have just blown all of my Christmas gifts because there's no way my parents are giving me anything with these grades, right? I was, I was a B student at best. So there are all these kinds of things that can truly get us into a place of sadness. And I want you to hear something very clearly this morning. That sadness is real. It's not made up. It's not fabricated. It's there because we're, we walk through things in life. And we're walking through something maybe this year that we didn't walk through last year. Or we're walking through challenges that just sort of deflate us a bit and make Christmas like, why, do, why bother this year? Why put the decorations up? Why get a tree? Why do this? And I want to encourage you. Jesus understands. There's a passage. I'm, I don't want to read the entire passage this morning because I'd, I'd rather kind of unpack the passage a bit more. Some of you know this passage really well. There's a passage in John chapter 11. And it says that Jesus was a really good friend of this family where there was Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were two sisters and a brother, right? And Jesus gets word that Lazarus is not only sick, he's, it says he's sick unto death. In other words, he's in hospice. And then he gets word that don't bother coming, he's already dead. But Jesus decides to go anyway, to visit the family. And it says in John chapter 11, it says in verse 34, after having a conversation with Mary and with Martha about the resurrection and about eternal life, he says, where have you put him, meaning Lazarus? And they told him, and Lord, come and see where we put him. And there was a tomb. And it says that when Jesus got there, he wept. That he wept. And the people standing nearby said, see how much he loved him. You see, I think, I think even Jesus gets the fact that there are just seasons in life where we weep, right? A full body cry. It's not just a little tear that runs down the cheek. It's just you let it out and you let it go. And it just happens, right? And it's this maybe even a cathartic moment, right? When it just, you just let your guard down and you just let the tears flow. Maybe you're alone. Nobody sees it. Or maybe you're with somebody else and that person holds your hand or gives you a hug, right? It just, because we get it. And, and I think even Jesus gets it. And our, rep, our representation from Scripture is that even Jesus got, had one of those moments where he just let it all out and wept for the situation that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was willing to cry for us. I mean, we all know this is... This is our first teaching note this morning, and we do these teaching notes in a part, as a part of our messages so that we could learn more, listen more, pay more attention, and remember more. And there's just some things we want you to remember, and so we highlight them in these teaching notes. And the first one is this. We all know a level of sadness that hits us during the holidays. We all recognize a moment of sadness. There are just these moments, and sometimes they come in little waves or little floods, and then they're gone, right? And like, oh, yeah. You know, and it could, be, it could come as you hang an ornament on the tree and remember that I got this ornament from somebody who's no longer in my life. They're no longer here. The situation isn't the same. Or, or you're writing out your Christmas cards and you realize that I don't have to send a card to that person this year. Or that I haven't seen that person all year. And I, I should be. I should see that person. I should make a point. I should do those things. And I didn't. And so there's this little level, this twinge, right? This little 
pinprick of sadness that happens. And then maybe it goes away and we go back to, to life. But those moments are there. And so here's what I want to do for just a moment. I want to give you a moment to just say, okay, Lord, me and my sadness, here it is. I want to give it to you today. I want to recognize it fully and completely, that it's here that we all have it, that we've all been through some stuff. And I would imagine that if I, if I ask you, have you ever been through some stuff that just caused you some sadness? Deep sadness, that you walked through a journey in your life that you would never want anyone else to walk through ever in their lives because it was just so hard. That if that's you, if that's the place where you've been, if you've ever been in that place, and that Christmas sometimes has just these little moments where it tweaks your sadness meter, right? And you just peg for a moment. If that's you, I want to give you a moment to just talk to God. So I'm going to be quiet for a moment, whether you're here in the room or whether you're online with us. I'm just going to give you a moment to say, okay, God, he's right. I have some of those moments in my life, and I want to just give it to you and ask that you would take that moment and hear it in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for listening to us about our sadness. And we ask, Lord, that you would show us something today. Not that our sadness will ever go away fully or completely, but that there's something more that we can realize is a part of our lives today. Help us to see that, Lord, because you have revealed it to us, as only you can, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this message is about the things that have the potential to steal Christmas away, and if we dive into that sense of sadness so deeply, so completely, so fully, that even Christmas, we don't want Christmas to happen, I think Jesus has a message for every one of us who are in, find ourselves in that place, and that's this, that we can focus on something different, that we can take a look at something greater, that we can take a look at something bigger that would allow us to celebrate Christmas. And here's what Jesus would love for us to focus on, that we can focus on joy instead of a search for happiness. That we could focus on something different, because you see, I've fully learned in my life, and I think you have too, that, that there is a massive difference between joy and happiness. That there is something very different between finding joy in my life and seeking happiness. And what I've learned, like you have learned, is that oftentimes Christmas is about finding happiness, right? You know, opening a gift or kissing somebody under the mistletoe seems to make us happy, right? We find happiness around those good moments, but happiness tends to be fleeting. And so we're always looking for the next happiness high, right? If we're looking for happiness, it can be found. I, the other day, I, I stopped at the candle place out on 322, and I bought those little wax melts that you put in, you know, around your house, and, and the house smells like mistletoe, or at least that's the name on the wax melt, right? And I went, I, I walked in the house after having everything turned on. I had been out in the backyard, doing some work, cleaning some things up, walked in the house and went, <sighs> right? That smells like Christmas, or maybe for you it's, it's hot chocolate around the fireplace, right? Or it's walking through Christmas candy lane at Hershey, at Hershey Park. Or maybe, maybe it was that first snow that we saw, just a glimpse, just a dusting, right? And you went, yes, there it is. And it made you happy. But the problem is, with all of those things, right, the problem with all of those things that make us happy is that they're fleeting. They, they easily disappear. And then we have to find the next happiness fix in our lives. And, and granted, I enjoy doing all those things during the season. I hang out with my friends, great food, fantastic conversation, exchanging gifts. I love all those things because they do make me happy. But there's so much more. Christmas is so much more. Christmas is about joy. A joy that Jesus brings 
into our lives. Christmas is about something much deeper than my momentary fleeting feelings of happiness. You see, I think what Jesus wants to do at Christmas as he comes as a child in the manger, he's bringing something more massive than a feeling. He's bringing something deep within my heart, deep within my soul. He's bringing me joy. A joy, a, a, a joy of the Lord, a true joy that cannot be stolen, cannot be taken from me, cannot be dependent on whether I'm happy or not. You see, joy can be something I can experience even when I'm not happy. I know that sounds crazy for a minute, so, so stay with me, please. Stay with me because this idea of happiness and joy, joy something, is something that is given to us by God that causes us to have a peace about any situation, whether we're finding ourselves in a moment of happiness or whether we're finding ourselves in a moment of sadness, we can still experience the joy of the Lord. Because joy is not dependent on my situation. Hear me clearly. Joy is not dependent on whether everything is going well, whether everything is working out, whether everything feels good. Joy is not dependent on me and my situation and my condition. Joy is dependent on God. You see, the true joy of the Lord is not dependent on me, but dependent on a God who never fails to place that joy deep within me and to bring that joy into my life every single day by the presence of his spirit in my life. You see, joy is all about the fact that Jesus came to bring salvation into my life. That's my joy. My joy is that I am saved by a Savior who would leave heaven and come to earth. That's joy. Joy is about my God, coming and loving me so much that no matter what my situation is, his love will never leave me. He says to me, I am with you always, even to the very end. I'm never going away. I'm never, ever going to abandon you. And I will put my joy in you so that you understand that no matter what happens, I got you. It's okay, I got this, it's gonna be all right. No matter what happens, no matter whether it's a fantastic day, an incredible moment, whether you just walked out of, of Radio City Music Hall and you saw all those legs kicking and went, yes, this is Christmas. Because you see, happiness says I've gotta go back in and see it again in order to feel it again. Or I'm going to try to hang on to those feelings as, as tightly as I can. And Jesus says, no, no, let me put my joy deep within you. So that it's not dependent on the situation, not dependent on the fact that you just saw something, just experienced something, just had something that made your day. That there's so much more to this kind of living. That Christmas is about that kind of joy. Proverbs 17, says it's a joy that is a good medicine to our souls. That that's the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord brings a salve to our souls. I wonder, as I read through Matthew chapter 1, I wonder how Mary and Joseph discovered that joy how it must have been for the two of them. Here's what it says. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Lord, where's the joy? I mean, the feelings in the middle of that situation? Engaged to somebody, pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to bring Jesus into the world. She's just had an interaction with the angel Gabriel. That doesn't happen every day to most of us. She's going through a myriad, a myriad of feelings, right? And yet, her Magnificat says that she is joyful in what the Lord has done. But it doesn't end there. It says, Joseph, her fiancé, a good man, did not want to describe want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Where's the joy there? And the feelings that must have raked through Mary and Joseph's lives. In this very moment that we read about from 2,000 years ago, I wonder, and it says, he considered, as he considered this, Joseph considered 
maybe putting her away, just being quiet about all of it and just walking away from it because his feelings were just going crazy, right? It says that as he considered all of this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. And listen to this. Here's the joy. For he will save his people from their sins. See, the situation for Mary and Joseph must have been incredibly traumatic, and yet the words of the angel says something so powerful to all of us that it must have sounded so powerful to them as well. He will save us from our sins. The joy that's been placed deep inside of us is God's very presence with us. Here's what I mean. In those moments when life gets really messy and we, we find ourselves on that roller coaster of, of happiness to sadness to happiness to sadness, depending on the situation and the moment or the phone call or the... In those moments, it's important for us to recognize and step back for just a minute to say, okay, Lord, I don't know what you're doing in this situation, but I know your joy is still in my life. For your salvation has not been removed. You didn't take your salvation from me. You, you didn't steal your presence from me. You didn't say, see you later, good luck with that. You didn't abandon me. But instead, you stayed with me. And you promised that you would save me. No matter what my situation. And so in that, Lord, I will experience your joy. I will draw on your joy you see our joy is based this Christmas our joy is based on our Savior the salvation we have is what brings us our joy all the other stuff can happen right but the bottom line is at the end of the day I have a Savior Jesus came to save my life and your life and every life who believes in him. That's the joy of Christmas, is that we are saved. That's my joy. So when we turn the lights on, it's not because we want people to enjoy Christmas and feel happy. It's because we want people to know that there is a light that shines in the darkness. That there is a light that shines into my sin and saves me that there is a light that comes into the world when we when we decorate for Christmas we are announcing to the world that there is so much more come to know him come to see the Savior of the world let me let me be one who celebrates that joy for if not we can allow the situations to steal Christmas right away from us for if we're dependent just on our happiness, oh, are we in for a roller coaster ride? <laughs> but if my life depends on a Savior who brings joy to my soul, then I can walk through every Christmas with a joyful heart, with peace, and I can rest. I can rest knowing that my Savior has come to the world to bring me life. Here's the rest of Matthew chapter 1. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child and she will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means, listen to this, God with us. Our joy this Christmas is that God is with us. No matter what. No matter what you might be going through, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what the situations may have been, God is with us. No matter how devastating, no matter how hard, how challenging, how difficult, 
God says, I'll be there. I'm at the table with you. And I know that there's an empty chair. I've seen your relationships. And I'm here to tell you there's more. I've walked with you through the difficulties and challenges that you've had. And I, let me say this to you, God says, I've got you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So I want you to hear this morning, you have a joy that is deep in your soul. Spend a moment connecting with a God who brings that joy to your heart. As we get ready this morning to recognize his presence in us. Here's how he did that. 2,000 years ago, he sat with his disciples. He said, I know life's going to get tough. I know life is going to get really challenging. As a matter of fact, what you're about to witness, no one should have to see. For they're going to take me out and they're going to accuse me of being something I'm not because they don't understand. And in their lack of understanding, in their lack of knowledge, in their lack of faith and trust, they're going to brutally kill me in front of you and everyone else. They're going to make it so that I'm unrecognizable to you. But trust me, I'm doing this for you and for the sins of the world. That this must happen, and I will walk through it for you. So no matter what, no matter what you see, what you experience, no matter what happens, and no matter how long you live out your days, do not forget. Remember me. Always. Every day. You see, I think he said that to us because he recognized and knew that there would be moments when we would walk through the the valley of the shadow of death, that we would walk through the highs and lows of life, the happiness and sadness moments that happen, and we would become dependent on our feelings. And what he wanted us to hear is, remember me, remember who I am, who I've always been for you, and that I've come to give you life. And in giving you life, you can find joy. And so today, I want to invite you to the same experience he gave to his disciples 2,000 years ago so that you can remember him today and step into this place of joy with him once again to lay down the things that might keep you from seeing and feeling and sensing and knowing that joy in your life. And saying, God, I want more of your joy because my feelings can rob me of that joy. And so today, I want to take a moment to pray with you, and then I'm going to invite you to come forward for communion. If you're at home, take a moment to run to the fridge and to your kitchen and grab something you can use for communion today if you would like to join with us. Heavenly Father, you set a table before us. And some days it feels like you did so in the presence of our enemies. The things that would steal your joy from our lives. And there are plenty of things out there, Lord. We've been through some stuff that has the potential to steal the joy of knowing you, the joy of our salvation. And so, God, today, we lay down who we are so that we can pick up your joy in us. We bring before you our situations, our concerns, our struggles, so that we can pick up your joy today. 
Remind us, O oh God, through these elements of bread and juice, just how far you went to show us how much you love us. And as we receive these gifts, Lord, remind us that it was your body in place of ours, your blood in place of our blood, your life for our life. And in so doing, remind us, Lord, that joyfully you gave us eternal life. And that we can live in and with you, we can live for you and because of you every single day. And so, Lord, bless these elements today. By the power of your Holy Spirit, come and dwell here in this place that we might fully experience you and the joy you bring. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you for watching Crosspoint Online this week. We hope that you enjoyed that message and got something out of it. Before we let you go, we do want to give you the opportunity to be part of the community here at Crosspoint Church through giving. Your giving helps do all of the different ministries we're involved in with kids and with young adults and teenagers and families in the community, work we do around the world in Sierra Leone and other places, and you can be a part of that by giving through Crosspoint Church. You can go to the link that is right in the description of this video, go online and give there. You can click this QR code that's at the bottom of the screen. It'll take you right to that page. We appreciate everybody who wants to be a part of the giving that helps the ministries of Crosspoint Church happen. Thanks, and we will see you next time.